Mountaineers versus the Pitt Panthers, sponsored by Mazda and the full line of sophisticated Mazda products. 79, the interstate that connects these two schools, some 80 miles apart. It's an excellent day for football. The last time, as we just mentioned, that this West Virginia team was able to beat Pittsburgh was in 1975. The game conditions, 68 degrees. Really, no factor whatsoever. It rained yesterday, but the field is right off, and here come the Panthers of Pittsburgh. Said. A lot has been written about this game, but the one underlying fact is it'll be a physical game. Gary, they call it the backyard brawl. We heard Eric Farsegan talk about defense a little earlier in the, in the broadcast. Pitt's defense has not given up a touchdown this entire season. And West Virginia's defense, they've been pretty tough, too. Against Boston College last week, they, have, they were backed up 12 times inside the 10-yard line. Boston College didn't come away with a single point. Boge Fazio, his second year as coach of Pittsburgh, after replacing Jackie Sherrill, he thought he really was just a caretaker of the team. This year, he's doing things the Fazio way. Well, he's no longer polishing. He feels like he really has to coach. The last 25 years of his playing and coaching career have been set, spent on the defensive side of the football field. The statistics show that. The last five years, Pitt's defense has been ranked first in the NCAA. Don Neelan of West Virginia. He's taken them to back-to-back -back bowl games. His goal coming here was to catch up with Pitt and Penn State. The last two years, he's closed the gap. A win today would be a big step to becoming the best in the East. And one of the reasons they've been so good in the East is Don Neelan has spent most of his time on the offense. He believes in balance, and he believes you need to run the football to win. Let's look at some of the individual players. We talked about the Pittsburgh defense. A guy that's really been a leader is Al Wendlandkowski. He is a family man. He's married to Melissa. They have a two-and-a-half-year-old son named Alan. He's relentless. He just keeps coming after you. He's been the MVP defensively in two of the first three games. Well, Wendlandkowski characterizes the Pitt defense. He's tough, aggressive, puts pressure on the quarterback. He's had six sacks, and he wants to get in Jeff Hosteller's face today. What about the other side, though? Offensively, Bill Fraley. What a job he has done. A sophomore All-American. They listed him at 270 pounds, but he actually weighs 290. He's so strong, he might be a player of a lifetime. Well, to show you the kind of confidence that Pitt has in Bill Fraley, last week against Maryland, in a critical situation, they ran the ball behind him nine successive plays, all positive games. He combines tremendous physical skills with a defensive personality. He's an aggressive offensive lineman. You saw in our pregame show a feature on Jeff Hostetler. He's named Haas. He came from Penn State, a straight-A student. The coaches say he can run, he can think, and he can throw the football. He's also very special, Coach Neyland Fields. Well, Bobby Ross of Maryland said it best when he said about Hosteller, he can control the game from the quarterback position. The key today is how well Hosteller can pick up the blitz, take his team out of bad situations, and put them in good ones. But it might come down to the kicking game. Paul Woodside, the All-American kicker for West Virginia. Eric Schubert, who is excellent for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has won seven in a row, nine of the last ten. But West Virginia would like to stop that. They'd like to do something about it today. Field 60,000. Pittsburgh against West Virginia. The official, the referee, Raymond Bauer, the men in charge of this game. Pittsburgh has won the toss. They have elected to receive. Picking off is Steve Superick. Back deep. Keith Tinsley for the Pittsburgh Panthers. And good coverage for the Mountaineers at the 16-yard line is where they'll snap the ball. Ed Hughes, excellent on the special teams for West Virginia, made the tackle. Let's take a look now offensively at the Pittsburgh Panthers. First, we'll take a look at the backfield and the wide receivers. Quarterback John and Jimmy, they're going to ask more from him this week. Watch McIntyre vastly improved at the fullback spot. Up front, the line. 
Bill Fraley, we talked about him in the center, Jim Sweeney as well. Big back. From the 16, first down, John and Jimmy, giving up. Under the ball, the entire the ball is fumbled out of bounds, but it will be Pittsburgh's football. A little shaky start here for the Panthers. Con Jimmy starting his third game for Pittsburgh. Get a loose yardage back to the 12. Here defensively, the forward wall of West Virginia. Dave Oblak had two sacks last week. Oblak, they feel, makes the defense go. And the linebackers and the secondary. Now, Curtis will not be starting. Steve Newberry is back after missing last week. Tim Agee is a potential All-American at free safety. Second down, 14 for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Stennis and Wallace split out for Pittsburgh. Con Jimmy pitching to Bailey. And Bailey doesn't have a lot of running room. He's back to the 15-yard line. That's still a yard short of the initial first down marker that they were starting from. And so it's going to bring up third down, 11 for Pittsburgh. This is what West Virginia wanted to do early in the ball game: is make Pitt go the distance, the entire length of the field. Here they are on the 15-yard line. They've been unsettled here to begin with. West Virginia would like to hold them here on third and 11, force them to punch, and get good field position. The White Collins has checked in. Collins had a shoulder injury last week against Maryland, but he's in now, split out along with Bill Wallace. Third and 11. Now Jimmy with pressure. Rich Walters, Ed Hughes, a loss back to the 10. And West Virginia defensively, so impressive. And this is what we talked about, get Pittsburgh backed up. John Kajemi is only a sophomore. He doesn't have the experience in this position. He's only played three games up to this point. He gets pressure right there from up in the middle, number 55, Oblak, like we talked about. They got the sack. They put him in terrible field position, and West Virginia is going to get the ball inside the 50-yard line. West Virginia feels like a block a kick. Pittsburgh had one block last week. Tony Recchia to bump the end zone. Not an exceptionally long kick, and the fair catch is called for by Scott. Mike Scott. 33-yard kick, setting the ball up at the Pittsburgh 42-yard line. So West Virginia, excellent field position. Let's now check offensively the line, or check that the backs and the wide receivers. Jeff Hosteller, 60% passer. Wolfley had an outstanding game last week. Up front, they're all juniors in the line. Ron Bennett, watch the tight end there. Hosteller on first down. Six-yard completion. Bennett, the tight end. West Virginia comes out with very good field position. They knew before the game they wanted to come out throwing the football. Jeff Hosteller is first looking to his flanker. He is not open, but you see the maturity to him as he comes to his secondary receiver, his tight end, number 84, Bennett, for a big first down. Bennett with deceiving speed. He's had bad ankles, but he ran well there, didn't he? From the 17, first down. Number 33, and Harvey inside the 15 to the 14, a gain of three. Harvey is playing in place of the injured Tom Gray. And defensively, let's look now at the Pittsburgh Panthers. Up front, they're big. We talked about Al, Al Wingakowski and Bill Moss, number 71, too. Moss, an All-American a year ago. Benson, they are really high on him. And back deep, Tommy Flynn, an All-American candidate. And Melvin Dean, the newcomer there. Second down. A long seven for West Virginia. No score, just underway. And here, Wolfley. And Wolfley has a first and goal. Melvin Dean, the right side linebacker with the tackle for Pittsburgh. Three different plays for West Virginia, three different formations. This is just a fullback play by Ron Wolfley. He follows his block. It's a good block down by the tackle. Josiak comes down and picks up the first down. Wolfley, who has a brother in place for the Pittsburgh Steelers, last week had a brilliant 67-yard punt. I should say, off the fake punt, he ran it against Boston College. Finished over 100 yards for the day. First and goal to six. Hostetler, and he'll lose yardage. Back out to the 14-yard line. Good pressure put on that time by Pittsburgh. 
Alvin Lukowski, a man we mentioned in our pregame show, number six. You see Dolman, 56. He's battling to get that starting job back away for Bill Sapio. We talked about how tough Pittsburgh's defense is. Just as a reminder, they have not had a touchdown scored against them. Tremendous pride on this defense as you look at Alvin Lukowski. They've not allowed a touchdown. We just said this, this is where it gets very tough. They like to blitz. They're strong and free safety here. Second and goal now from the 14. Stetler changing something. And I don't think he got it off in time. A flag has been thrown at the five-yard line. It's going to be a delay of game, five-yard step-off, so Hostetler took too long in changing the play. Well, we talked earlier about one of the keys was for him to take his team out of bad situations, put them in good ones. He looked what he saw what he thought was going to be a blitz. He tried to call an audible, but took a little bit too much time. This Pittsburgh defense has taken great pride in the fact that they haven't allowed a touchdown, and they're making it difficult now, aren't they? It's now second and 19. Second and goal from that point. Hostetler with time. in five plays. Remember here, it was second and 19, second and goal to go. West Virginia had created a couple of mistakes early there, but now you see the maturity of Jeff Hostel already bounces back, drills the ball in there to number 19, Wayne Brown. We saw them take good field position, march down the field, a couple of passes, a couple of nice runs off tackle. This time, good protection for Hosteller. You see no men in his face. And so, for the first time this year, a team has scored on the Pittsburgh defense. Hostetler, they want to keep him in the pocket. With the protection, Brown out of Somerville, New Jersey, his first touchdown catch, and the Mountaineers are up by seven. 11.39 left in this first quarter, and West Virginia striking. Look at the distance, 42 yards. It was field position. It set it up. Hostetler throwing the touchdown pass, his seventh of the year. Brown, his first of the year. Suprick to kick off. Stone is back deep along with Keith Tinsley. Oh, did he get into this one? And Boge Facio, his defense has been dented. They take great pride in playing defense. In fact, Don Nealon said, Pittsburgh seems to enjoy playing defense. <laughs> well, they have a, tr a tradition of tremendous defensive players. It continues this year. Like you said, that was the first one they gave up. Coach Fazio played at Pittsburgh, a linebacker, a center, an assistant coach, and now in his second year as the head coach. From the 20, first down for the Panthers. John Jimmy. Complete to Darnell Stone, and he'll go out of bounds at the 28. That's a pickup of seven. And it'll bring up second down. An interesting point here to make early in this first quarter is that Pitt has not gone over Bill Freilich. We talked about how much they do. Maybe they're trying to change a tendency, but every play they've run from scrimmage has been to their right side, or well, away from Bill Freilich. I would imagine, Pat, that Con Jimmy, a little confidence, needed to do that after that shaky first series. Second down, make it two. With three men are split out on this play. Only one running back, that's McIntyre. And Jimmy, complete to Bill Wallace. First down. That'll move it to the 37. And now for an NCAA report, let's go to New York and Brent Musburger. Gary, more problems for Arkansas. TCU after recovering the mission, setting up a first down for Pittsburgh, just across the 37. Stennett and Waddle.
Thomas put to the top of the screen. Bailey and Stone, the running back. This is Bailey. And Bailey to the 41-yard line, a gain of three. It'll bring up second down. Van Richardson, number 37, inside linebacker, making the tackle for West Virginia. What we have here today are two gritty football teams. Western Pennsylvania kids dotting both lineups, and they pride themselves in being physical. Like Don Nealon said, none of these guys drive Cadillacs. <laughs> they may carry my work to work with them. Back it down, a long six. pressure and then merits a loss back to the 35. We're going to take a look at the nose guard number 55, Dave Oblack. We talked about him put, put, having two sacks last week. Watch him pressure John Kinjemi here. He comes off a block. They're trying to set up a screen. Forces Kinjemi to step up right there into the tackle of number 96, Jim Merritts. Good pressure by Oblack. Loss of seven. Second sack of the day to the 35. Collins is checked back in for Pittsburgh. Third down. 13. Lots of time. That is Collins. There is a penalty flag, however. It would be enough for the first down. Mike Scott, number 27, coming up defending on this man who many people felt would not play today. He's kind of flexing the arm. It's an 18 yard pickup, and we'll wait for the determination on this penalty. An eligible man downfield. He had a lot of time to throw. That might have been the problem. The Pittsburgh can't afford those kind of mistakes. On third and 12, when you convert, and then you have to turn it back over because of penalty, that's going to cause them some problems because, again, they're going to be playing in bad field position, and West Virginia is going to have a short field. So Collins coming up with a catch, but to no avail. The penalty now being stepped up. Moves it back to the 30, a five-yard walk-off. That is right. It is also a loss of down plus the yardage, so they'll be kicking. Boge not too happy about that development. Instead of the first down, they kick. Rekia to kick from the 15. And Willie Drury will go back for West Virginia. He is dangerous. They can block one again. Let's see if they come after it. Drury from the 25. Good coverage by Pittsburgh. A 45-yard kick. Seven-yard return. Bill Sapio making the tackle for Pittsburgh. West Virginia leads it by seven. One-yard line. Hostetler will set it up. Jumping around, looks like Pittsburgh got back. Nope, here comes the pass, and they get to Wolfler. Troy Hill made the stop. There was a penalty flag. It looked like maybe Pittsburgh got back. We'll see if they were drawn off or whether they came across that neutral zone. That was an 11-yard pickup by Wolfley. Offside, they didn't get back. Pittsburgh. They'll refuse that one because it was an 11-yard pickup. There's Shilkin, 67, Moss, 71, the big men up front for Foge Fazio. First down from the 42. Ostetler up to King Harvey. Harvey across the 45. Troy Benson, 54, making the stop for Pittsburgh. Harvey is just a remarkable athlete, Pat, but they can't keep him healthy. He's been hurt so much. But due to the injury to Tom Gray, number 33 is back in, and they need a big game for him to keep that defense honest. Second down, five. Drury is in the game, split out. Wayne Brown, the other flanker. Stedler, Brown, and Brown to the second catch of the day. First down. 11-yard completion. Melvin Dean defending. 
the Pittsburgh defense was most concerned about Jeff Costello breaking containment and sprinting out, and that's exactly what he is here. He's sprinting to his left. You see the defensive coverage, Tommy Flynn at the top of the screen, lots of room for number 19, Wayne Brown. The ball is delivered on time, the pickup and the first down. Hostetler is three of three for 56 yards and a touchdown from the 42 of Pittsburgh. Holland's back in, along with Brown, split to the top of the screen. Harvey. Harvey with a 32, and that may be another first down. It was Dean again on the tackle for Pittsburgh. We talked about how aggressive this Pittsburgh defense is, how they like to be pressuring. And sometimes they run right by the player and get blocked. Watch number six, Al Wendlikowski. He's had six sacks this year. He really overruns it. But a nice block put on there. They allow Ron or King Harvey to pick up the nice game. David DeJarnett was the man, Pat, that kicked him out very well, and Harvey did get the first down to the 31. That's one of the problems when you have this aggressive type of defense. You can overrun plays and force yourself to be blocked easily. Holland, along with Holland, split out for West Virginia. Over the top, Hostetler, intended for Rich Holland. Melvin Dean, they're picking on Dean. He's the junior. He's the youngster back there, and they're going after it. That's an interesting point. He is the weak link, if anywhere, in the defensive secondary. Tommy Flynn, Pittsburgh's free safety, certainly an All-American candidate. Troy Hill, the other corner, number 22, probably a stronger player. So we're seeing West Virginia come out and pick on number 28, Melvin Dean. But Dean is trying to replace Tim Lewis, the number one draft pick. Mullins out. Drury comes back in. He, along with Gary Mullins, split out. Second and ten. Little delay to Harvey. And Bill Moss, 71, was there. Moss, the All-American, has been a big play man. In fact, he sacked Hostetler in this game last year for a safety. To the 30, it'll bring up third down still. Nine yards to go. You mentioned last year's game, this Pittsburgh defense, I think, hit Hostetler 17 times. They had to carry him off the field afterwards. And that's one of the concerns West Virginia had today, protecting Jeff Hostetler. But thus far, they have done it, Pat. Third and nine. To nothing, the Mountaineer. A naked from Greg and a pass. That pass being completed to Rob Bennett. Bennett, we were told a moment ago, and bruised his knee, but it doesn't seem to hinder his play. He catches a first down pass. Don Nealon steals a little something from Boston College. He said Doug Flute hurt him with this play so much last week that he was going to use it himself. It's just a naked bootleg. You saw Jeff Hotsettler fool the entire defense. Come back, great call. The pass to the tight end, Bennett, for the first down. Bennett, just moments ago, we had a shot of him. had ice on his knee. <laughs> but here he is catching another pass. Look at this. West Virginia has things going their way. Hotsettler to Harvey. Good defensive effort that time for a yard pickup. Chris Dolman, 56 out of York, Pennsylvania. Dolman has outstanding ability. The problem is he has not been a consistent performer for the Panthers. But that time he was equal. Wayne Brown will come in. Mullen checks out. Hostetler, the straight A student, and he is not taking easy courses here. On the 19. 5.59 left in the first quarter. Hostetler. Oh, Moss got him. It's bubbled. It picked up the midair. That is Tim Quince. And Quince can take it in as he caught it in midair. Pittsburgh is going to be on the scoreboard. Touchdown. All 240 pounds of him. It took him a long time to get to the goal line, but it counts. It was almost halftime by the time he got in. What a shocker for the West Virginia faithful. A chance to tie it up now. Eric Schubert. Total dominance by West Virginia, and in one play, it could be all equal if he hits this one. Tight.
get it up. When you get in scoring position against the Pittsburgh defense, they like to bring a lot of his people. They're going to have a full-on blitz here, and you're going to see number 71, Bill Moss, come from Hostetler's backside. He never sees him. Boom, the ball is put up in the air, and now when it's caught in midair, it can be advanced by a defender. Tim Quince, a defenseman's dream, 6'2", 240 pounds, and he's running like he weighs 260. It looks like he wasn't going to make it, but he did. And Pittsburgh is back in this football game. This intense rivalry is really heating up. Well, the question is now, how do you get back from that? West Virginia has to be stunned, and Eric Schubert will be kicking off. Schubert, in 13 kickoffs this year, has had only one return as Mullen goes back along with Drury for West Virginia. That now has been officially recorded as a 75-yard fumble recovery for the touchdown by Quince. Schubert will be kicking into the wind, so it might be difficult to get this one back and not return. Drury, and he won't bring it out. West Virginia will be at the 20. Let's go back to New York now for an NCAA report. Here's Brent. Gary, Michigan State using his third-string quarterback today because of injuries. So here is Clark Brown. He sets up a screen to Carl Butler against Purdue. The Boilermakers lead 3 to nothing, But Butler turns on the afterburners. 82 yards for the touchdown. They miss the extra point. It is 6-3 Michigan State. Let's go back to Gary. Well, Brad, it looks like it's a big day of plays. As Quince has one, you just mentioned that long return. Some excitement here in college football. Quince may never get an opportunity to do what he did earlier. Give Bill yeah, Moss uh, half of that uh, fumble recovery touchdown. He set it up with a big sack. West Virginia now, who had dominated the first quarter, with now 5.33 remaining in it. Worst field position they've had in this game, starting from their own 20. See if Hosteller can keep them moving. The Harvey. Nice move by Harvey. Very close to the first down. Ray Weatherspoon, number nine, and Cesar Aldisert making the tackle for Pittsburgh. They call this game the backroom backyard draw, and here's the reason why. Number 84, Rob Bennett, who was hurt a little earlier, comes down and puts a tremendous block on number 54, Troy Benson. It sets up the run of King Harvey. Oh, was that a block? Second down, a yard for West Virginia. And Pittsburgh's outside again. The run will be enough for the first down, but they'll probably take the penalty now and get additional yardage. That's twice they've had trouble with his cadence. Well, that brings up a point. Again, the intelligence and experience of just Hotletter, Hostetler. Just another way to get a first down, using your voice inflection. He knows that Pittsburgh's defense is aggressive, likes to get off the ball. What do you do? You go on a long count, you change your cadence. He's got two penalties so far. And so, by penalty, they'll pick this up. First down. There's your time, 4.50. Offsides, white. First down. Time of possession. West Virginia's had the ball almost the entire first quarter, but it's still tied. Total offense, West Virginia 100 yards, Pittsburgh 9. Wolfley. And the white shirts are there. Coming up with Weatherspoon, Dolman 56, called his number a couple of times early. Holland will check back in for West Virginia. There is Dolman. He's 6'6, he weighs 220 pounds. He had a shoulder problem. He started out the year as a third stringer because he's having scholastic difficulties. Kind of the doghouse, but he's battled back to become a starter. Never reached his potential in Second and 11. Wolfley. Good reaction. Coming over was Aldisert, 87 out of Pittsburgh. Very fine student. His dad's a doctor. And the yardage will be marked to the 33-yard line. And it's going to be third down, and they're still in the half 11 yards away. Don Nealon, he says that Bo Schembechler had the greatest influence on him as a coach when he was an assistant at Michigan. Third and 11. Last I think he's knee touchdown. It 
did. He slipped and his knee touched down, and West Virginia will have to kick the football. Jeff Hostetler on third and 11 is going to sprint out to his right. They opened up with this pass early in the game and tried to come back to it. You see 84 in the middle of the screen. He's trying to get the ball to him. The knee clearly touches the ground. It's 4 for 15. You get the feeling, Pat, that big return for the touchdown, poise-wise, has really hurt West Virginia. Took a little wind out of their sails. They kicked the football super. Tom Flynn. They'll try to kick away from him if they can. But they didn't. Flynn's going to let it hit. And it takes a Pittsburgh bounce and goes up across the 40 to the 41-yard line. And now Flynn has picked it up. Wait a minute. Have they thought it dead? If not, Flynn's going to take it in. Flynn to the five, and there's a penalty flag, and we have some confusion on the football field right now. West Virginia indicates the ball was out at the 45 but the officials are down at the other end of the field. That would be a 60-yard return if it stays. Boy, West Virginia has been snake bit in this game. A critical mental mistake in West Virginia should have downed that ball. Should have stopped that ball around the 40-yard line. But there is a clip. We're going to look at that. You mentioned it, Gary. They wanted to kick it away from Tom Flynn. That's exactly what happens. The ball does hit the ground but it bounces back, and that's going to happen sometimes in AstroTurf. Now you're going to see some of the West Virginia players there. The ball is still in bounds. It's tapped back in bounds. The ball should be downed right there. Well, they did not do it. Because Tom Flynn picks it up and runs it all the way down to the three-yard line. But what has happened that they are making it good, but they've tacked on the clipping penalty, moving the ball back out to the 28-yard line. Pat, evidently the whistle not blown, and you've got to stay with it. Excellent field position. 7-7 seven to seven our score. What an interesting first quarter. Tom Jimmy. To Bailey, Mark Bailey. And Bailey is to the 21-yard line. It'll be two, maybe three yards short of the first down. Let's look at it again. You're going to see that now if the ball is touched, the ball should be down here. You see number 59 there going over the ball. You can't really tell whether he touched, but there's going to be another West Virginia player right there who taps the ball in bounds. And there's an official right there. And Tommy Flynn comes in a little later and picks the ball up. Three guys touched it for West Virginia. Second down, now three. Touchdown will stand, and they'll assess it on the kickoff against West Virginia. Don Nealon must wonder what in the world is going on out here. He was in control of this football game. They were leading 7-0, moving. Then the fumble, 75 yards, and then the punt. But eventually is returned for 60 yards. And Pittsburgh leads it 14-7. Schubert, who now has hit... 40 straight point efforts. Early in the football game, we mentioned that Pitt was running to its right. They had not run over Bill Fralick yet. Well, this time they did. They get the number 26, the freshman, Chuck Scales, and he follows Mr. Fralick right into the end zone. He outruns one defender. It's a nice way to start off a career at Pitt. Newberry, 28, almost shoved him out of bounds. Let's take a closer look at Bill Fralick. We just mentioned he's 6'5", 290 pounds. He's allowed to use his hands. He's blocking number 96. Merritt, you don't think he's dominating him? 
he's given Skeels. And Skeels ran right off his block and into the end zone. And Coach Basio told me he's going to be a great one. And he's living up to some of that, Billy. What a good job by Chuck Scale. Two big plays against them. And there's a team where time when Jeff Hostetler, the quarterback, the senior leader, has to step forward, come up with a big play, and get West Virginia moving again. Second down, nine from the 21. Time to throw. From Willie Drury, number 48, that was Melvin Dean, the guy they were picking on earlier, and he really whacked it. He's not happy about uh, being picked on. One look at Jeff Hostel. We told him it's his responsibility now to get something going, get the numbness out of this offensive team. He does deliver the ball well hitter to number 48, Willie Drury. But watch the hit that 28 Melvin Dean comes up and puts on him. He's going to separate Drury from the ball, and that causes the incompletion. That's just good defense. Dean was one of the most improved players of the spring. Won the job. And now Pittsburgh has an important third and nine. I should say West Virginia. Hostetler back. The play to Hollins. Is that enough for the first down? It's very close. Let's see where they mark it. start back for West Virginia. Holland showed some great concentration. Holland's out of Sainsville, Ohio. Last year had five touchdown catches and only 18 receptions. A big play performer. From the 30, first down. Keith Tinsley, a freshman from Detroit, stride for stride, and Hostetler on first down, going for it all. So back at the 30, second down, 10. Hostetler with the outstanding arm, but the thing that really concerned Pittsburgh was to keep him in a pocket. They want him dropping straight back, man. They don't want him rolling out. They're very happy to see that kind of formation, that kind of pass right there. throw pressure as Shilkin 67 first to arrive Aldisert 87 back there that's the fourth sack in this first quarter Shilkin a very outstanding student he carries a B average he's a free man well the four sack in the fourth first quarter that's way too many but West Virginia is going to have to move Hostiller out of the pocket and run away from that rush a little bit the line of scrimmage, now the 22. Third down and a bunch. Third and 19. Remember, last year he was hit 17 times. Protection is there. Holland, too tall. Again, they're going to Dean's side. West Virginia will have to kick the football. you one thing, that ball's rolling around this time, West Virginia will get on it. Well, I expect it actually to punt, punt two Tom Flynn this time, they can convert that ball. To kick the ball will be super, he's averaging 39.1, he hits it very well, beautiful kick. Flynn calling for the fair catch, and Pittsburgh will have it at the 27-yard line. Tomorrow on CBS Sports, it's week five of the National Football League. Some of you will see the Eagles against the Falcons. Both teams really lost some tough ones last weekend. Or it'll be Tampa Bay seeking their first win of the season. You were there for that game last week, Pat. They go against the Packers plus other regional action, all starting the NFL today. From the 27, first down, Pittsburgh. Got Jimmy changing the play. We have had a life 
halftime of plays in one quarter. That may be the reversal that West Virginia needed. You saw John Conzeri there talking to Coach Azio. There was a mix-up there on the handoff. The result was a fumble and a recovery by West Virginia. Gary Christian, the man again, credited with it. Out of St. Albans, West Virginia, a junior. Now, Hostetler asked for some quiet. This will be the last snap of this first quarter. Ray Weatherspoon on a blitz. Harvey. Harvey for a couple of yards. And so we have played 15 minutes, and we've had everything happen. This rivalry living up to its billing. Seven-point lead by Pittsburgh side of West Virginia. Well, it's been a crazy first quarter here, Gary. We've seen fumbles, we've seen field position, we've seen mental errors by teams. It's been a remarkable first quarter. It has. Everything has happened. There is the fumble recovery by Christian. Well, you had a sophomore quarterback trying to hand it off to a freshman running back, and there was some miscommunication between the two. Led to the fumble, and 49 Christian capitalized. It's exactly what West Virginia did early in the first quarter, capitalizing on field position. West Virginia had the ball for almost 11 and a half minutes. Pittsburgh only three and a half minutes. Their lead. Here's Holland on the reverse. And kept by Hostetler. What a fake. Hostetler to the 10. What a remarkable piece of ball handling. There is, however, a flag at the seven-yard line. This play was set up last week, believe it or not, because they ran the reverse two ball in last week for a touchdown. This time you see him fake it. The entire defense is faked out, uh, along with some of our people, but you see Jeff Hosteller keep the ball. Then he makes a nice run. Breaks a couple of tackles. There's Tommy Flynn. That is a personal foul against Pittsburgh. A nice call on first down in this part of the field. Again, we talked about how Pittsburgh likes to blitz, how aggressive they are down the field. You see the fake there. You see Hotsteller's head turn like he gave the ball to Gary Mullen. You can see, see it, still see his head turn. He takes the ball under, puts a little move on him, fakes Keith Tinsley out. He's not a bad runner for a big guy. Let me guy. ask you something. Did you really know who had the football? Absolutely. <laughs> Never a doubt in my mind. <laughs> All right, they're going to take half the distance to the goal here on this penalty. So it'll be moved inside the five-yard line. We talked about all this defense. This has been a fun offense, too. Boy, has this been a zany game, huh? First and goal, West Virginia. Chance to tie it up. Bennett and Fisher, two tight ends now, have come in for the Mountaineers. Just underway, second quarter play. Harvey Aldisert, 87, making the stop for the Panthers. And this is where Pittsburgh is known to get tough and tougher. Right down in the trenches. We talked about what kind of a physical type of game it is. They're going right over their right tackle, David DeJournet. That's good movement by the West Virginia offensive line. That's tough yardage to, to pick up right down there. And King Harvey picks up two or three. Harvey does a good job of that spin move, doesn't he? Second and goal at the one. Hollins in motion. Harvey again. some trickery. It was a fake reverse with Hotsteller carrying the ball down there close. A penalty got them in a position to score here. So the man who scored the touchdown, King Harvey, out the first two games with a finger injury, kind of stabbing some of those wounds. It's all even. I'd like to keep the great G. Down in the air. 
out of Dublin, Virginia. It's all even. 14 all. Subrick to kick off. Gary Bender, Pat Hayden. Sold out. Standing room only. Out near field. And that will go out of the back with a touchback. And at the 20, Pittsburgh will have the football. Let's get an update now for the NCAA report. Here's Brent Musburger. To that loss at Mississippi. First down now at the 20. Pittsburgh now. They've got to get their poise back. Now Jimmy to Wallace. And Bill Wallace swarmed under. Pick up a seven. It'll bring up second and three. AG 44. He's a kamikaze for West Virginia. He's recruited by Sam Huff, the former All-American here at West Virginia. They grew up 10 miles apart in the Washington, D.C. area. Hey, Sam Huff knocks on your door. You're going to pay attention. He's here for the game, by the way. They honored the 53 Sugar Bowl team. Second and two. Darnell Stone. Stone. That's the first down to the 34. Anthony Daniels, number eight. Van Richardson make the tackle. We're in the second quarter, and the fans here, I don't believe, have caught their breath. The big plays. Pittsburgh losing last week at Maryland. West Virginia unbeaten. Collins is back in at a wideout. In motion is Stone on a first down. And the completion to Collins. Dwight Collins, first down, Pittsburgh, 14-yard pickup. See Collins getting up quite slowly there. He's at that sore shoulder. Michigan State playing without their number one and two quarterbacks, leading Purdue. Michigan against Indiana. Matt Stennett now comes in replacing Collins after that reception. From the 48, first down. Stone just across the 50. Ernie Anderson, now the backup nose guard, number 95 out of Collier's, West Virginia, made the stop. Could you believe how early the fans started arriving here for the game? 10 o'clock, the entire West Virginia student body was here. Woodside, before the game, was putting on an exhibition, kicking field goals from 62 yards, and it was in mean, a standing ovation. Like they're going out and slam dunking the ball in warm-ups in basketball. Right down the center, every one of them. Second down, eight yards to go. Now Jimmy. Wallace. And Wallace struggles forward for the first down to the 40. He's a possession-type receiver. Doesn't have the great speed. 10-yard well, completion. A possession-type of pass. Again, the difference between this year's pit team and last year's pit team. Last year, they had a big, strong guy from playing quarterback by the name of Danny Marino. Jimmy playing quarterback now who doesn't have that kind of arm so we've seen the short control type of passes Wallace three catches on the game for 28 yards from the 40 first down Stone Stone to the 35 good leg drive for another yard Anthony Daniels who was shaken up last week against Boston College they were concerned about a bad ankle he was there to make the stop on Stone Stone they say is getting better and better Hard runner. Second down and four. Collins now comes back in. Collins and Wallace split up. Jimmy really got belted. We're going to take an isolated look at number 95. He's the man right over the center, Ernie Anderson. He's going to beat Jim Sweeney to center. Then now Jim Sweeney looks to give some help inside. Again, Kajemi does not see him. That's the third sack today of John Kajemi. That gets your attention if you're a quarterback. <laughs> There's more than that. Third down, 11.
Pressure again. Collins. AG is intercepted. Now he'll be able to bring it out to the 20 because the impetus of the ball took him into the end zone. It's like a touchback. Now, wait a minute. One guy's put it down at the one. We're having a discussion. They'll refuse that. That was offensive pass interference. Now they still had the ball at the one yard line, though. Don Nealon wants his defense to play as, as a unit, and you're going to get to see some of that. There's three defenders right there. Poor choice by John Kajemi. He's under heat, throws the ball, but there's three defenders. There's the teamwork. Number eight, Anthony Daniels tips the ball, and number is free safety, number 44, Tim Agee. Picks the ball off for the interception. Now, Gary, it looked like his momentum carried him into the end zone, in which case it should have come back out to the 20. Well, we are not right, though, because they're setting it up with the one. You can never argue with the officials. We could try. <laughs> now, Daniel's got a hand on the ball, and Daniel's an AG. I don't think there's any more aggressive safeties in this game. They just fly around out there. So West Virginia will have it. They'd rather have it at the 20 instead the one, but they'll take it anyway. What a football game. Defensive secondary, number eight, Anthony Daniels tips the ball here. Number eight, 44, Tim Agee. Now he intercepts that ball right there on the one yard line. His third step is into the end zone. His momentum clearly called him and carried him into the end zone. The ball should be on the 20. Instead, it's at the one and Hostetler, precarious situation, rolls out, Brown. And he has a first down. How's that for getting out of difficulty? A terrific call by Don Nealon here. Here's where you're backed up. The defense is expecting you to run a fullback plunge. What do you do? You bring big Jeff Hostel out in the sprint out, throws a safe out pattern for the first down, gets you out of trouble. All right, we're glad to be here. People have been so nice to us. And I'll tell you what, I've never seen a football game quite like this one. And we're just 10-27 into the second quarter. 14 all. Hostetler with a first down pass to the 14. That's Randolph now in the game. Pat Randolph, number 24, freshman. Hostetler and giving up Wolfley, Benson, Atia, number 40 for Pittsburgh, combining on the tackle for the Panthers. That'll mark it at the 15 yard line. Near the conclusion of this game and every one of our broadcasts, Pat and I will be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each of the teams that Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. And the MVP receives certificates from Chevrolet acknowledging their outstanding performance. From the 15, second down nine. Hostetler wide open is Bennett. Stedler is kicking himself because he had six points and that been on target. Those kind of opportunities only come along a few times during the season, but we've seen a change in, in philosophy of West Virginia's offense now. We mentioned, as we look at the end zone view, we mentioned how West Virginia got in trouble early by dropping back. You see the blitz there. So what have they done? They've come back and spread it out. We said they had to do that. He has a lot more time to throw the ball that way. And there's number 84, Rob Bennett, who's wide open. The ball is overthrown. The ball was thrown on the move, which makes it a little bit more difficult, but he still had him for a big play. Instead, it's third and nine yards to go from the 15. Hostetler all kinds of time. This time it's Hollins. Two near misses. You see the displeasure on Jeff Hostetler's face, you're going to get a look at number 88, Rich Hollins. Once more, Hostetler sprints out to avoid the rush. It gives him a little bit more time to throw the ball. Rich Hollins is open, and the ball is well thrown, and I think the ball should be caught. You speak like a quarterback. <laughs> yeah, my view is a little prejudiced. <laughs> Subrick to kick to Tom Flynn. He's averaging 42.5 on two previous attempts. Very high, but not that long. Flynn let it hit and West Virginia will down it and they will down it with authority so the line of scrimmage will be the West Virginia 48 33 yard kick 14 all our score 
two near misses. Pat, what impresses me on that last series, he didn't really have great field position, but what courage they showed. Well, in, in a change in philosophy, give Don Nealon some credit. We said earlier they had sacked him four times in the first quarter, so they changed their offensive game plan. They sprint him out more, and you've seen, you've seen the results. Short kick, setting the ball up at the 48. Pittsburgh has possession. Now, Jimmy, and that's a fine catch by Matt Stennett. Stennett, who they thought might start today due to the injury to Collins, over making the grab. First down catch to the 32. Here's another look at number 24, Matt Stennett, filling in for the injured Dwight Collins. He runs, again, a lot of room given there by number 27, Mike Scott, and give Congeny some credit. The ball was well thrown right there in the numbers, easily away from the defender for the catch in the first down. Third catch of the year for Stennett. First down now at the 32 of West Virginia. Oh, that was a little next up. Didn't get the pick exchange. It's an end result, a loss to Scales. Scales is having a little trouble mechanically back there. Even though he made that great touchdown run, that play just didn't develop. You mentioned that he was a freshman, and you have a sophomore quarterback. Sometimes you're going to have those kind of problems when you have young players. But give West Virginia's defense some credit, too, there. Great penetration by the defense. You saw 45, Steve Hathaway. He was the man that was the other linebacker last year because Darrell Talley was the All-American. He's a leader now. Second and 13. And Jimmy, you could see that really bothered the sophomore. Well, you mentioned it. Anthony Daniels, a strong safety, tried to fool Jonathan Jimmy, make him look like a blitz. You saw Con Jimmy call the audible, and that's exactly what Daniels wanted him to do because and then he backed up into coverage. And Jimmy, growing up in a hurry. Their starting quarterback, John Cummings, was hurt in the first game against Tennessee. Coach Fazio says Cummings, when he has, comes back, will have to win the job back. Now Jimmy, with time, boy, is he fell the go. Enzo Wallace, touchdown. of the day, a 35-yard strike. And Jimmy was melted. He threw that ball under pressure. It was A.G. and Daniels trying to defend on it. Schubert point after attempt. And Pittsburgh has taken a 21-14 lead. Oh, the teams have put so much pressure on the opposing quarterback that both teams have resorted to sprinting out. Again, John Kajemi is trying to avoid some of that rush. Gets a little bit more time, pulls up, and he takes a real lick but throws the ball beautifully to number 25, Bill Wallace, who is wide open in the end zone. A good, it's going to be a crossing route. You're going to see why this works. Number 32, Dwight Collins comes to the outside. Number 25, Bill Wallace comes to the inside. There's some confusion as you see two defenders go over to cover Collins. He attracts some attention. That leaves Bill Wallace free for the touchdown. That's what a reputation will do for you. So Wallace cradles it. And with that catch, Pittsburgh back on top. Remember coming in here, Pittsburgh's defense had given up a touchdown. Oh, did he hit this one. That's the reason only one has been returned this entire season against Hubert. Let's go back to the touchdown toss from Conjemi to Wallace. The man at the bottom of the screen, number 32, Dwight. Moment, Pat, as you were getting ready to go into that replay, and uh, everything seems to be back to snuff right now. And from the 20, we'll uh, set it up for West Virginia, and we'll go back to that replay. 21-14, the Panthers lead the Mountaineers in movement. That is Kurt Keel, number 71. What happened a moment ago, again, for those of you who are sitting at home, we lost power. We had an outage drop here. And as an end result, the entire truck went off the air, so your television set is okay. And we went to black. 
Not the way we wanted to do it, but we're back and healthy now. When I'm at home, I check to see if any of my kids have unplugged the television set at those kind of situations. We'll get to that replay. You just stay with us, will you? I'm sure you're not going to leave. This one is some football game. Hostetler off to Wolfley. Wolfley out to the 19-yard line. Now let's go back to that replay, establish what actually happened. We're talking about Dwight Collins down here in the bottom of the screen, number 32. His reputation preceded him to Morgantown. Watch how many defenders are going to cover him, which leaves Bill Wallace. Three West Virginia defenders go over to cover number 32 Collins. It leaves Wallace wide open for the score. That was Wallace's first touchdown catch this year, not blazing speed, but that is a true possession receiver there, wasn't it? Second down, 10. Mullins, Mullins split out for West Virginia. Hostetler, beautiful protection. Complete to Randolph. The freshman will lose a yard. Randolph, considered by many to be the best running back in Pennsylvania high school ranks last year. He scored 29 touchdowns out of the Philadelphia area. It'll be third down, 11. Randolph still learning the system. Native ability, but you got to be able to change the plays, change your routes. Drury now in. He and Mullen split out. Third and 11. First down, but he gets five, maybe six on the play. One Linkowski, number six, caught up with him. And West Virginia's going to have to kick the football. Again, that's the mobility of Hostetler. Big, strong at 6'3", 212. A better runner than you would think at that size. <laughs> to kick the football will be super. Flynn will go back. Six minutes, 28 seconds left in this first half. Kicking away for Flynn. And now Flynn comes up at the 40. First man misses. And he's still at the 40. 36-yard kick. Fred Smalls on the special teams making the stop for West Virginia. I want to remind you of something coming up next. Live from the Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut, the singles finals of the U.S. Women's Indoor Tennis Championships. Sylvia Hanika and Kim Schaefer playing for the 75th National Indoor title. Be sure to join Tim Ryan, John Newcomb, and Virginia Wade. Should be an exciting tennis match. That's next on CBS. First down now, just short of the 40-yard line. Scale. And the freshman is bursting on the scene. A flag on the play. A chase by Scott. He caught up with him, but two penalty flags. Scales has really arrived in this game. Chuck Scales has run twice over Bill Freya, like at both times for big games. We saw the touchdown a little earlier. There he is, Chuck Scales, the freshman. 5'11", 182. Personal foul against Pittsburgh. That will come back. It was a 26-yard run. To his left, Chuck Scales showing remarkable instincts, again, for a freshman. You can't coach these kind of things. He starts out to his left, makes a nice cutback, avoids a number of defenders, just finds some open territory, and takes up a big gain. Let's take another look at number 79, Bill Freilich, the All-American tackle. He's right there at the bottom of the screen. He's going to block down on the linebacker. He dominates, seals him off the entire inside, gives Chuck Scales an awful lot of room to run. That was Van Richardson who ran into Freilich. By the way, Scales' father, you remember him? Charlie played for the Steelers and Brown. So Scales comes from a very illustrious sports background. And what a job he's done thus far. First and 22. setting up the screen to Scales. And Scales still will be about 12 yards short of the first down, but he got 10 of them back. Steve Hathaway, 45, making the tackle for West Virginia. Let's check what's going on elsewhere. Michigan State. They already have upset Notre Dame. Michigan. They've lost one. That was to Washington. Second down, 12. Stennett, Wada split out for the Panthers. John Jimmy, Paul 
what a catch by Stennett. He didn't get that much. They're still going to be nine yards short of the first down, but acrobatic. John Kinshemi is, is showing some people the kind of arm that he has. Now, we, we saw him throw deep a little earlier to the touchdown for Wallace. Here he throws a short, quick out to number 24, Stennett. Well caught by Stennett, number 24. Stennett, a red shirt freshman. He was a former tailback. Third down, nine. Scales in motion. Letters a little toss forward to Bailey, and that didn't fool him. That was Rich Walters, 97, who read it so well out of Glenshaw, Pennsylvania. Fourth down. They're pulling it all out today, aren't they? This is just a little shovel pass, Gary. It's almost like a draw. Herman Lang gives us this picture. You see Kunjemi drop deep, is looking downfield, and he just pitches the ball right to it. Number 21, Mark Bailey. He did not fool Rich Walters, number 97. That's good defense. And he not made that tackle, though. He had some running room. Drury will field it. And congestion stops his progress at the 25-yard line. West Virginia trailing by seven. Four minutes, 30 seconds left in the first half. A 47-yard kick. Come Jimmy, a new wrinkle, but it didn't work on third down. Out of Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. The Bear tried to recruit him at Alabama. Bo at Michigan. Bo just glad he's where he is right now. Georgia leading Mississippi State at halftime. Brent Musburger, Eric Parsegian will update him. Have Highlights of what's happening elsewhere. Josh Devlin, straight ahead. Benson making the stop on Randolph. And it will bring up a second down and seven yards to go. Rob Bennett, we've seen him catch a one big pass. He was open on another. Now we're going to watch his blocking skills. He's a big man, 6'6", 240 pounds. He's putting quite a block there on number 87, Cesar Aldesert allows Pat Randolph some running room. It is physical. We expected that. Two wideouts to the top of the screen for the Mountaineers. A handoff. Randolph having a little trouble with his footing. Benson over to make the stop. Benson is the guy, Pat, that Don Neely kept talking about. He thought maybe he was their best defensive player, and he made the tackle there on number 24. He's been a very surprising, uh, pleasant surprise. He's a junior linebacker, and he's their leading tackler. Hill is back in. Troy Hill was shaken up early in the ball game at that cornerback spot. He was out with a shoulder problem. But you see him now, number 22 for Pittsburgh. Third down, five. A Stetler and a fine catch by Holland. And that'll be a first down. Holland's that concentration, the man that Hostetler likes to go to for the big play. Here's two wide, two wide outs on the wide side of the field. Again, Jeff Hostetler sprints out. You need five yards for the first down. You see number, Tom, number five, Tommy Flynn, driving, but not in time to reach Rich Hollins for the first down. Hollins, big play this year, was a 49-yard touchdown grab against Maryland. He's 6'2", 180 pounds. First down. I don't believe uh, Hostetler told everybody the snap count. <laughs> Just he and his center knew. <laughs> Shilkin was there to make sure he didn't go anywhere. So the five-yard penalty, the legal procedure, will move it back to the 35. The Mountaineers, they haven't beaten Pittsburgh since 1975. They're ruling that a play, a four-yard loss. Out of penalty. Here's Hostetler, and he's in trouble again. And that'll bring up third down and a long ways to go. Evidently, they ruled that as a snap and as a play and as a four-yard loss. We understand there's an upset in the making, and I would guess so. Georgia Tech hasn't won this year. North Carolina is unbeaten. North Carolina. And Brandon Arrow will update that. I'm sure we'll have something that will give you an insight. 
North Carolina has that outstanding defense that Arrow was talking about in the pregame show. Hey, at halftime, we're going to have a feature on Steve Young. What a year he's having for Brigham Young, the quarterback. Third down, 15. Boy, the pressure really coming now. Benson is there. Five sacks for Pittsburgh. Troy Benson of Altoona, Pennsylvania. They say he played one of the finest games they've ever seen in the first game against Tennessee. Not doing bad today. Five sacks in one half, that's way too many. Again, they decided to drop back that time for the first time in a while, and they got in trouble, and they gave up the sack. Subrick, number 11, will be kicking. We have a timeout. Timeout with 1.29 left in this first quarter. Pitt in West Virginia. Going to give you an up-close look as we visit the two campuses. Kicking the football, Steve Suprick for West Virginia. Tom Flynn goes back. Suprick out of Virginia beats Virginia. Flynn from Verona, Pennsylvania. Fair catch called for by Flynn. And at his own 39-yard line. 36-yard punt. John Jimmy. Jimmy, Gary, the quarterback for Pitt. There were some question marks about him coming into this football game. Got his start here. He comes into the ball game. He's had a pretty good afternoon, as you can see. He's 11 for 14. Had a long touchdown pass for Bill, to Bill Wallace, 116 yards. He's played very well. I'm impressed. A little stronger arm than I anticipated. Well, he came in, directed it to a victory over Temple. Lost to Maryland. Heavily recruited. We mentioned the Bear and the Bow were after him. The Bear and the Bow. That's right. Oh, he's hit there as he delivered that one. Oh, was he decked on the 30-yard line. That was Hathaway, the linebacker, number 45 at hitting. We talked about what kind of an aggressive hitting game this is. Watch John Congemi, the quarterback. He's going to get hit by 45, Steve Hathaway. Again, he comes from his backside. Now, most quarterbacks are going to get hit and have to take some punishment. He's a young quarterback. Not that you ever learned to do this, but you have to be able to take the punishment. Now, we had a penalty flag, and again, for the second time, Pittsburgh has an ineligible receiver downfield. That's loss of down, as well as five yards. Ineligible downfield against the white. Loss of down. He's second down. It's interesting that's happened twice, Pat. Now, Jimmy paid for it, but he got hit and lost yardage, and it's going to be second and 15. Right ahead, Bailey. Dave Preston, the time, approaching a minute to go in this first half. It's been a wild one. Fumble recoveries, hunt returns, touchdown passes. A 76 meeting between these two. They're some 80 miles apart. Up and down I-79, they've battled for many, many years. Third and 14. Darnell Stone. Stone, maybe a yard. West Virginia should call a timeout here. They're doing that, Pat. They ask for the timeout. They have two remaining. Hathaway and Jim Merritt's combined on the stop. So the Mountaineers anticipate getting the football. There's only 35 seconds. Or perhaps the punt block. We've said that a couple of times. As we mentioned, Pittsburgh had a punt block last week against Maryland for a touchdown, and West Virginia felt that they could block one this week. Maybe this will be the opportunity. The guys they like to send are Cam Zopp, number 43, and Matt Smith, 50. What is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Winnie the Pooh trying to get the honey jar off his nose. I'll watch this game. You watch him. See if he comes out of that all right, will you? want a, a replay, an end zone replay of that. <laughs> How about slow motion? There he is. He's yeah. out of there. That's a nice shot of Coach Fazio. The kick of the football was Recchia. He's averaging 41.6. <laughs> there he is. Look at that classic profile. He's more relaxed this year. I think you are too. Well, we're glad to be bringing you NCAA football right here on CBS. Recky had a kick it. Rushed by Zop. Didn't get there in time. Drury at the 21. And he'll make it to the 28, and that's all. 
Tony McNally, who snaps the ball for Pittsburgh, was down there to make the stop. 41-yard kick, 8-yard return. And so with 25 seconds left in this first half, Hostetler going to have to come up with a big play. 72 yards away. There it is, 25 seconds left at halftime again. We'll be switching back to New York. Brad and Aris standing by. Scores and highlights, a feature on Steve Young, who has just been unbelievable for BYU. Air Force last week, how many touchdown passes? From the 28th. Hostetler, pressure, and down he goes. They cannot protect him. That's Chris Dolman, 56, and that is six sacks now by Pittsburgh. One more look at Chris Dolman, number 56. This is his fourth sack of the year, but Jeff Hosteller's been under duress this whole half. It's been remarkable, actually, that they've been able to put 14 points on the board because he's either been hit, sacked, or under pressure all first half. And so the first half has ended at Mountaineer Field. Beautiful day for you. Let's take a look now, Pat, at some of the key people. We followed them through the first half of play. West Virginia offensively. Jeff Hostetler, we felt that he had the advantage in the quarterback position, but he isn't getting that chance. He's had too much pressure on him. Rob Bennett, the tight end. We saw him catch one ball early in the game. He's done a fine job of blocking. And King Harvey, the tailback, filling in for Gray, has done a credible job at tailback. He's made a couple of nice spin moves. Moving inside, West Virginia will receive the football as we start the second half. Defensively, Pittsburgh has some key people, and let's isolate on him now and look at him. Well, all 11 of them have been tough, but number six, Al Wengenkowski, we talked about him. He's been in Hostetler's face, had a sack. Number five, Tom Flynn, had that big punt return. We saw that. He's been all over the field in the secondary. And number 54, the linebacker, Troy Benson, again, their leading tackle, really has put pressure on Hostetler as well. The tackle, number 71, Bill Moss, he caused that big fumble. They quince re return for the touchdown. And so Schubert will be kicking off. Out of Washington, Pennsylvania, Drury and Mullen will go back deep for the Mountaineers. In speaking to people here at halftime, the West Virginia faithful said so many times they've gotten close only to have big, zany plays, beat them back. Well, they've got to come back again. Drury, who's had outstanding success in this department returning kickoffs, he had a 70-yard return earlier this year against Ohio. Big second half of play, CBS and NCAA football. Schubert, and he's going to have this in return. Not very many are. Mullen, Gary Mullen, number one. And he slides into second base. He would have been better off not returning it. So at the 16-yard line, the Mountaineers will have it. Reggie Smith, number 29 for Pittsburgh, covering on the kickoff. And that's only the second kickoff this year that Schubert has had returned on him. That's a pretty impressive stat, isn't it? They hadn't allowed a touchdown coming into this game either, but that was knocked down in a hurry. West Virginia's first possession. So at the 16, Hostetler, he'd like to have better field position in this. Sacked six times in the first half. King Harvey. Pittsburgh defense is physical. Dennis Atia out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, who is a wrestler on the pit wrestling team, making the tackle. Hostetler, remember those two near misses? They look big, don't they? They could have had a touchdown there to Rich Hollins, number 88, early, or early in the second quarter. Mike Swanson, our statistician, tells us that they've announced the attendance for this game, 64,076. That's an all-time record here for Mountaineer Field. And the first live telecast ever. What a beautiful facility. Second down, 10. Complete to Drury. Drury with a nice move for the first down. Callahan, number 31, made the stop. Second efforts, all he got him the first down. He was short with the initial catch. Interesting, their first pass, what they do, Jeff Austin, the rolled out to his left, away from Pittsburgh's rush. Coach Fazio, second year. He is Pittsburgh. He represents the Steel City so well. And Don Nealon at Bowling Green, Michigan. He played quarterback for Bowling Green. First down for the Mountaineers. Wolfley. He gets 
close to almost five yards on the play. One Linkowski, number six, making the tackle for the Panthers. Talked about this facility. Isn't this a gorgeous Saturday afternoon? The whole state of West Virginia is tuned into this one. It seems like college football season now again, doesn't it? It really does. Trees and the leaves starting to change. Gray sky. This game, so big. West Virginia, you probably heard in the pregame show with Brent, when today they'd have an inside track on the Orange Bowl. Here is Harvey. Harvey to the 38. Troy Benson on the stop, and that'll be another first down for West Virginia. And speaking about how big it would be for West Virginia as we look at King Harvey, again, they have, as we mentioned, they have not beaten Pitt or Penn State since Don Evans here. This is also a game for respect and prominence in the East. Harvey now, 12 carries, 39 yards. Don Nealon said, I'm tired of being number three. We want to catch the Pitts and the Penn States. From the 39, in motion, Wayne Brown. King Harvey. Guess who was there? Went Lankowski, number six, and Benson. When Lankowski has arrived this year. He's been a good football player, but he's becoming an outstanding one. Let's take a look at Wingo Kelsey. He's at the top of the screen, number six there. You can see him come right to the outside, fight off the block of number 84, Bennett, but then off of Wolfley to make the tackle on King Harvey. Fought up two blockers to make the play. Second down, 14. That's a four-yard loss on that play. Holland split out, Brown to the top of the screen. Here is that... Reverse action, and he overthrew Bennett. Nealon really upset about it. Pat analyzed that for a right hand to rolling left. It's a much more difficult throw to your left. And again, I mentioned earlier, this was the influence of Doug Flutie. Doug Flutie burned West Virginia last week. He's going to fake the pitch. Watch the whole defense go to their left. Now he's going to come back, and he's got Rob Bennett wide open. He tries to take a little bit too much off the ball. And sometimes when you aim the football like that, that's exactly what happens. The ball sails. Hostetler batted himself, and you saw the reaction by Neelan. It's third and 13 here on West Virginia's third down attempts. They've averaged 10.9 yards to go here. And they need more than that on this one. They're not going to get it. And the intended receiver was Brown. So West Virginia will have to kick, and Hostetler struggling a little bit. Well, They had that play really set up to Bennett. He had a long open field had he gotten the ball to him. Kicking the ball, Subrick averaging 38 yards. Flynn back for Pittsburgh. Very high. Going to be ruled out at the 29-yard line. Pittsburgh has the football after a 35-yard punt. They also have a seven-point lead. One company provides cars and trucks to satisfy the wants and needs of virtually every man and woman in the USA. That's today's Chevrolet. One company puts some of the world's most advanced manufacturing and design facilities to work for America. That's today's Chevrolet. It's played remarkably well in the first half. And Morton McIntyre has not been the factor that we expected him to be. That's true, because the fullbacks in the previous games have been their leading ground gainers. From the 29, first down. Pittsburgh has three wideouts. McIntyre, the only setback behind from Jimmy. Wallace, oh, he's having a fine afternoon. Wallace tackled by Ed Hughes. All right, let's take a look now at the West Virginia key players defensively. Dave Oblak, he's played very well. Put some pressure on John Kajemi. We saw Tim Agee come up with a big interception there in the first half. And Dave Crepton's made diff things difficult for the pit runners. The last pickup of seven on the pass completion. This time a handoff to Stone, and Daniels is there. Also Jim Merritt's number 96. Go! 
Waters have that last catch, his fifth of the day. Now it's going to bring up third down and a long one, almost two yards to go. Well, it's third and two, but the average yards to go on third down, fourth pit in the first half was 11.6 yards to go. That's awfully difficult to convert those. Well, this crowd into it. Two tight ends are in. And barreling forward was Tom Brown, number 44, a freshman. Brother of John Brown, who was a tight end for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Interesting over, they bring him in. It's an interesting they go over the right side. You would think they would go to the left over Bill Fralick. Were they trying to break some tendency? They go over, over the right side. They gave the ball to Brown and enough for the first down. So Tom Brown, a specialist, the diver, goes after it and gets it. Just short of the 40-yard line. Stennett comes in. Wallace is in. Stone. McIntyre, the running back. Stone crosses the 40 to the 43. Jim Merritt's 96 out of Hollisburg, oh, no. Pennsylvania. Oh, no. Making the tackle. Oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. The line of scrimmage, oh, no. the 44-yard line. Second down, seven, and Pittsburgh right now is coming right at him. Call is that right guard. He started the game. He's had some hamstring problems. Number 61. Mark Bailey. Bailey doing a good job after catching it. Has a first down. Mike Scott, 27, made the tackle. A 12-yard pickup for Mark Bailey from King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. Power football here by Pittsburgh. They've run the ball off tackle. They threw a short, safe pass to Bailey to get in Jimmy's confidence going here in the second half. Or that you're seeing classic. Pittsburgh offensive football here. And they're eating up the clock. 9.30 in this third quarter. Come Jimmy, 13 of 17, 136 yards and a touchdown. Boge has his Panthers on the prowl. And Jimmy, a lot of time, the receiver falls down. The receiver was Jeff Casper, number 88, a junior out of Washington, Pennsylvania. You can take a look at the two receivers running down, running to Ross. John and Jimmy had split out to sprint out to his left, and he probably shouldn't have thrown this ball. There's a lot of traffic there. He could have run the ball. It was first down, and he's thrown the ball into coverage. That may get him into trouble at some point. Remember, John Jimmy last year was the fifth-string quarterback. Due to injuries and other things, he's now their number one man. Second and ten. bring up third down. A good seven yards to go. Hathaway, 45 from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. And Dave Preston from Warren, Ohio. Stop number 46. Third down. Make it eight. West Virginia would like to get this stop. They trail by seven with 8.50 to go in the third quarter. The crowd getting to their feet. Defensively, is able to do it, and kicking the ball, coming in will be Brecchia. He's averaging 41 and a half yards. Going back deep this time is going to be Newberry, Steve Newberry. There he is, out of Peterstown, West Virginia. Missed last week's game. They're glad to have him back. for the corner and they're not going to get it and almost saved in nice effort that time hustling down the field coming up McCormick at the 20 the touchback for now Jeff Hostetler get him outside of the contain nice safe pass to the halfback for eight yards Bill Curry's rambling Rex they haven't won a game this year the Tar Heels are unbeaten second down three yards to go 
Wolfley, and Wolfley has a first down. Ron Wolfley, an excellent blocker, as you can see, very, very tough up the middle. Shilkin, 67, making the stop for the Panthers. Eight minutes, eight seconds to go in the third quarter. 21, 14 our score in favor of Pittsburgh. Oh, Iowa, what a big win they had last week. But Illinois leading them. Wolfley again. Crosses the 35 to the 36. Wojtkowski on top of him. This Wolfley is a very tough football player. Don Nealon talking about the fact that he just blossomed in the spring. Pittsburgh, they'd like to get the football back and get this offensive line back in it. It's Joe Moore, the offensive coordinator of Pitt, telling his offensive line they have to do it up front. Second down, six. Ostetler, complete to Hollins, and Hollins has a first down. They're kind of picking away at him right now, a nine-yard completion. Good point, Gary. That's one another way of beating a, a defensive pass rush, get the ball off quickly. We've seen a quick pass to the halfback Randolph, and then a short on the pass to Rich Hollins for the first down. There's the leader. As I said, he can run, he can throw, he can think. That is Woodside. <laughs> And what a model he has on his foot. First down for the 45. Hostetler rolling out. Brown, the intended receiver. Boy, he threw that one hard. Melvin Dean, again, the guy they're going after at that cornerback spot. He was well covered by Melvin Dean that time. Michigan with the lead. Maryland, now Virginia's unbeaten going into that game. Penn State. Joe Paterno saying we're getting better. Michigan State still leading Purdue. From the 45, second and 10. Hollins and Drury split out for the Mountaineers. Hostetler. That was Drury. Troy Hill was the man who was on top of him instantly. Hill number 22 for Pittsburgh. Now a third and 10 situation. Go Mountaineers! Go Mountaineers! Let's go Mountaineers! Let's go Mountaineers! Let's go Mountaineers! Third down 10. From the 45. Holland, Holland split to the bottom. Settler. He's going to run, and he's not going to get much more than a yard. That was Aldisert, 87. Boy, he just doesn't make mistakes. That's what Foge told us. He's always in the right place, and there was an example of it. He stayed right at home. We told him they were concerned about Hostetler scrambling and picking up first downs, but Aldisert, number 87, right in the middle of your picture there, stayed at home and made the play on Hostetler. So the drive stalls. Subrick will kick, and there is Tommy Flynn. 6.21 left in the third quarter. He hit a beauty. Oh, did he ever. And it's going to take a Mountaineer bounce to the six. At the six-yard line after a 49-yard kick by number 11, Subrick. Pittsburgh protecting a seven-point lead. The U.S. Women's Indoor Tennis. Sylvia Hanukkah and Kim Schaefer to follow this. Here is Stone, and Stone has a first down. That's getting out of difficulty in a hurry. And guess who they went over? Number 79, Bill Freilich, right to the left side. We're going to take a look from the ground. It's first and 10 in the six-yard line. You go to your bread and butter. You give the ball to Darnell Stone, lined up deep in the eye, and he's going to follow the block of Bill Freilich, and he's going to sprint outside for the first down. That's a big play when you're backed up. They move it out to almost the 18-yard line. And Jimmy to Stone again. And again, the last time they just took the ball right at the Mountaineers. They're doing it again. Jim Merritt's 96, making the tackle for the West Virginia Mountaineers. 5.35 in the third. 
It's been interesting watching over the last two years the change in, in Foge Fazio and his offense here at Pittsburgh. As we mentioned earlier in the show, last year he had all the offensive stars. This year he's changed the style. We've seen a very physical, run the ball off tackle, throw an occasional pass type of offense. A Fazio away. Back and down seven. McIntyre and nothing on that play. Derek Christian, 49. Big 6'4", 232-pounder, and he used every bit of that height and weight. We've talked about how well Bill Felix played all game. This time, he does not win. Number 79, right there at the tackle, left tackle. He comes down on Jim Barrett's. He misses his man. He ducked his head. Misses 49, Christian. Christian makes the stop. I guess he's human. <laughs> Third down and five. Collins is in the game. Split out. And Jimmy trying to talk over the crowd. He cannot hear, and he asks for the officials to quiet the crowd down. I guarantee you that's only going to fire up the crowd a lot more. You've been in that situation, I take it. Too many times. When you're on the road, it's tough. But can Jimmy give him credit? Still has a presence of mind to, to be sure he has everything in place. It's third and five, and in this part of the football field, you don't want to make a mistake. One thing they liked about number 15 is he had poise. It's louder. Third and five. Bailey. And is he going to get it? He does not. Just short of the first down. Hathaway. Daniels are over there. And they had to be there because he's about a half yard short of that stick. We're going to get a look at the swarming West Virginia defense. John Jimmy needs five yards to pick up the first down, keep a drive alive. He dumps the ball off to 21 Bailey, but you're going to see a whole host of Mountaineer defenders put a hit on eight Daniels. He gets some help from Hathaway, Christian, and Walters. The whole defense was there. Tony Rucky at a kick, averaging 41.8. Twin safeties back down for West Virginia. The deepest is Drury. Drury from the 34. Has a wall and gets to the 43. That's one of the few times West Virginia's had good field position. A 40-yard punt, a 9-yard return, and the Mountaineers have the football. 16-27. This time, the 44. The best field position they had since they scored their first touchdown. Wolfley, a yard. Troy Benson wraps him up. West Virginia this season has been an opportunistic type of offense. Here's a chance for them to take advantage of another opportunity. As you mentioned, the best field position, but now they're facing second and nine. Critical down for West Virginia. That's what's left of the third quarter. Hollins, Mullins, split out. 21-14, Pittsburgh. Osteller to Randolph. He's bent backwards after picking up two. And that was Benson again. He is all over the place. 6'2", 225. Leading tackler coming into this game. Don Neela knew what he was talking about. He said he's the best player of them all. This is some shocker. Hayden Fry, they won that big one against Ohio State. And all of a sudden, the Illini are really going after him. Third down, seven. Oops, Pittsburgh, they get back this time. at Pittsburgh zone, and this is what makes Jeff Hosteller so tough to defend. He's a senior. He's an experienced player. He comes down. The ball is going to be delivered right on time in front of all the defensive backs. You see, he needed nine yards to pick up the first down. Hollins made the nine-yard cut. The ball was there right on time. Hollins right there in the middle of your screen, number 88. Watch how the ball is right there on time. There's no way he can miss that football. That was Benson eventually making the tackle. Goes his range. Hostetler to Wolfley protecting the ball inside the 35. Ray Weatherspoon, number nine, a senior out of Clerton, Pennsylvania. That Wolfley, he hangs on to that ball like he's never going to give it up. Second down, seven. Drury comes in, Hollins leaves. West Virginia, the closest 
as they've been in a long time. Ostendler dumps it to Bennett. Check that Randolph. This time he underthrew it. Earlier, you might recall, he tried to hit Bennett the tight end. And he threw it over his head. Well, it's been a tough play for him. It really has. It's not that difficult of a throw, but when a quarterback tries to take something off the ball and make the ball too easy to catch, as we've seen him do once to Rob Bennett, there to Pat Randolph, sometimes those things happen. The ball sails or you throw it low. What a quarterback has to do when he has the guy wide open is still just drill the ball right in there. He may put that play on the shelf. <laughs> I and doubt it. They've had him open. <laughs> Either that or they'll practice it more. Third down, seven. to the occasion. Earlier, he was having some difficulties. That time, perfectly timed. Melvin Dean reads the quarterback and the receiver. When that defensive back sees the quarterback sprinting out, most times it's going to be a short throw. He reads the quarterback throw beautifully, comes in and breaks up the play on the pass to Rich Hollins. We're going to have a field goal attempt. Woodside, who kicked a school record 50-yarder earlier this year, will attempt one from 49 yards. A minute 29, third quarter. He was hitting these with regularity before the game. A.G. holding. What time? the 40 and this year he is 50 yards and 49 yards successfully and I like him he admits he's a flake most kickers don't but he just flat out admits he's a flake we have been told by the coaching staff that, that Woodside cannot even see the goalposts he is nearsighted so how in the world he can be that successful in kicking he was a walk on here you know, he had a problem with stuttering when he came here. He's got such confidence in himself, and he's a guest speaker at many banquets. He says, yep, I'm a weirdo. <laughs> they expect us to be. He came into the huddle one time during a pressure kick and asked everybody what the price of eggs in China are. <laughs> Super it will be kicking off. Darnell Stone back deep. That is a short kick, and they're going to field it. What a daring move that time by Darnell Stone. Looks like he ran out of bounds there. I think he did. He's at the 16 is what they're going to mark. Fred Small is the guy that got over there. Look at it again. Another look right here, Darnell Stone. The official's right there behind him. His right foot, and then there's left foot right out of bounds. Good call by the official. They are on top of it, aren't they? And at the 16. The West Virginia bench. Are they into this game as well as the fans? It's been a long dry spell for the Mountaineers. 21-17, Pittsburgh. Here's Stone, and Stone out to the 20. In a four. But we have a dandy here today, but don't forget tomorrow on CBS Sports. Week number five in the National Football League. How about the Eagles against the Falcons? Both looking to bounce back. Tampa Bay. John McKay struggling a little bit there, but they go against the Packers at a tough Monday night. Other regional action, all starting with the NFL today. Be sure to join us tomorrow on CBS. Second and six. Darnell Stone, a yard. And Hughes, 47, take the tackle. Here's the situation. Morgantown, West Virginia, a record crowd on hand at Mountaineer Field. Pittsburgh leading West Virginia 21 to 17. The Panthers have won seven in a row. And right now, West Virginia has asked for a timeout, stopping the clock with 29 seconds left in the third quarter.
This has been a game of some zany plays, big plays. But let's set the stage as far as the importance of this game. Coming into this telecast today, it was confirmed in New York that if West Virginia would win this game, they had the inside track to the Orange Bowl. They also, in the estimation of Don Neal and many, feel if they win this, they take a large step forward to be the best in the East. And Pittsburgh, on the other hand, they don't want to give up some of that authority that they've had here in the East. It's also for recruiting rights, too, Gary. Both these schools recruit directly against one another. Pittsburgh and West Virginia go into those towns and recruit the same high school kids. A win here for either team goes a long way in the recruiting wars. Boy, Illinois just adds to their advantage. That is a real shocker. Well, Iowa's coming off two big wins the last two weeks. Chad, I was thinking about this timeout. 29 seconds. What they really want Pittsburgh to do is have to punt into the wind here. It's enough of a win that it is a problem. Well, first they have to stop them. It's third and six. Now that's the next start. The next step is to hold them here. Shaken up. It looks like Oblak, number 55 for West Virginia. He's the man that's made their defense as far as Don Nealon is concerned. The nose guard out of Brook Park, Ohio. A guy who battled back from severe knee trouble in 1980. He's played remarkably well. You know, we saw Tony Fitzpatrick at Miami last week. A similar type of player as Dave Oblak. Really fortresses that middle. Let's go back on this play, Pat. And Old Black again is the middle guard. You're going to see him rush Kajemi. It's a draw play here. It's third and six. Everybody's guessing pass except Dave Oblak, number 38. Dave Preston's there to make the stop. Comes up short of the first down. This is a critical situation. Old Black is over the center, number 55. He slants out to his right, throws Sweeney to center off. He's there to the first one to put the stop on Darnell Stone. Matt Smith is there, Steve Hathaway. And right now, Oblak there looking him over. While we have the delay right now, let's take a look at some scores. You saw that Illinois score. Just shows you how crazy this year is becoming. Now, Florida State and Auburn. We saw Auburn earlier this year on CBS. Georgia, Mississippi State. Michigan, having a battle against the Hoosiers of Indiana. Maryland trying to hand Virginia their first loss of the year. Austin College and Temple, what a job Doug Flutie did last week against this West Virginia team. Oh, he's fun to watch, isn't he? And this is good news. Old Black is coming off on his own. A remarkable player. Michigan State still leading Purdue. He'll be replaced by Anderson, the backup nose guard. Anderson made a sack a little earlier in the game. scrimmage the 23 fourth down and they're going to let the clock expire as we come to the end of the third quarter our score pittsburgh 21 west virginia 17 pitt west virginia is an exclusive presentation of cbs sports we'll be back after fourth quarter action after this message and a word from your local station Lee Bergley to 21-17. Dave Oblak looks like an injury to his left arm. Right now, the issue is a punt. Fourth down. Reckia to kick for the Panthers. He hit it very, very well. Newberry back, signals fair catch, and makes it at the 27-yard line. Two weeks from today, mark this one down, as CBS Sports will be at Belmont Park in New York to bring you live coverage of the Jockey Club Gold Cup and Champagne Stakes races. Remember this horse, Devil's Bag, an undefeated two-year-old sensation who's been compared to Seattle Slough and affirmed, expected to hit the field for the Champagne Stakes. And Bob Fishman, he'll be there to follow the progress of that race. <laughs> That's October 15th, right here on CBS. First down, Hostetler giving it off to King Harvey, bounces outside, and he looks and hunts and searches for six yards. 
Gary, this is fourth quarter, gut check time. In last year's game, Pitt came from behind to win. West Virginia faces itself with a four-point deficit here in the fourth quarter. It's time for them to try to come from behind and get that prominence in the East that we've talked about. Well, remember last year, Pat, it came down to a last-ditch field goal effort by Woodside to scrape the crossbar. Well, they need a touchdown here. They're down by four points. On the 36-yard line. Second down and two. Oh, that time, Wolfley was gobbled up. Bukowski, Bob Bukowski, 95, a sophomore from Monroeville, Pennsylvania. There he is. He missed last week with a sprained ankle. Doesn't look like he has an ankle problem now. He is, by the way, an outstanding shot putter. He won the Big East title. Don Nealon, his team trailing, 21-17. Mullins, Mullins split out on a third down and three. And the receiver falls down. Mullins, no flag. Fourth down. Weatherspoon was defending on Hollins. Well, for, the, for there to be pass interference, number one, there has the ball has to be catchable. You'd be the judge. Watch Jeff Hustle as he rolls out to his left. Now he's trying to get the ball. He's faking short. It's third and three. He was guessing that they were going to play tight coverage, so he threw the ball deep. And way over the head of Rich Holland's number 88. Back to Kim Super. No rush whatsoever. Very high. Flynn, the fair catch. You got to stay away from him. About a two-yard buffer zone. That's the new rule this year. 31-yard kick. Pittsburgh with a 21 to 17 lead. Come on, John Houseman. Side averaging five yards in attempt. On Jimmy to throw on first down, and I think it's out of bounds. It is. Wallace had it. Bill Wallace has an outstanding hands. It was a beautiful catch, even though it was out of bounds. It was a one-handed catch, and his feet didn't stay in bounds. But there's a look at John and Jimmy. That surprised you? They threw on first down. It does. It did surprise me. And the amazing thing, when we look at those statistics for Fralick, West Virginia has actually put an extra defensive man over on Fralick's side, and that's one of the reasons they've run away from him so much. 14 of 21 for 139 yards for Con Jimmy, a touchdown and an interception. Second and ten, a delay to Bailey, and straightening him up was Van Richardson, 37. Sophomore from Bethel Park, a natural player. Don Nealon said if they can get him to play every down, he has outstanding potential. They attempted to throw the ball on the first down. On second down, what do they do? They try to run a little draw. draw. You see Mark Bailey trying to pick his way through there, but he runs into a big dark jersey in number 37, Van Richardson, who puts the stop on. Third down, nine. Two of nine on third downs in this game. And Jimmy broken up nicely that time by Mike Scott, number 27. Out of Parkersburg. That's a real perennial power here in the state in football. 42.6 average now for Recca, who goes back to punt. minutes, 40 seconds left. What a struggle this has been. Rekia doesn't hit it very high. Drury has a wall. Now it goes back, and that may have been a mistake. There is a penalty flag at the 20-yard line. Bill Sapio down there. 43-yard kick that time. Pittsburgh defense is tough enough, Gary. You don't want to be having to go any further than you need to. Well, they're going to have to, though, because that's flipping against West Virginia. That's been a familiar story. West Virginia has been backed up deep most of the day, and they're going to be there again. Well, 12-27 left in the fourth quarter, down by four points. Those are the kind of times you can't afford these kind of penalties. They may only get the ball once more after this possession. 
We have a timeout with 12.27 left to play. We'll be back in this outstanding arena in a moment. 21-17. West Virginia trailing. They have the ball at their own 10-yard line. First down. Hostetler to Wolfley. Wolfley met in the line and met efficiently by Aldershirt, 87. All right, let's update some other action in NCAA football. The New York and Brett Musburger for 87. Gary Arkansas sputtered early against TCU, but now they're in complete command. Brad Taylor, after a pump fake, goes to Keith Kidd. Kidd goes the rest of the way, 80 yards, and now the Razorbacks lead 35 to 14. Let's go back to Gary Bender. Brent, thank you very much. We have 11.53 left in this one now. Second down and seven. Hostetler, hot. First down. Rich Hollins has been their big man in the receiving department all afternoon long. 12-yard pickup. Rich Hollins, he's averaging 18 yards to catch. You mentioned he has been the big man. Same play they ran a little earlier. Jeff Hostetler splitting out to his right. Remember, remember, avoiding that rush, giving him a little bit more time to throw the football. Watch how much room he has. He's waiting for the ball. He sees that he's open. He wants the quarterback to deliver the ball. He's waving his arms. The ball is well thrown for the first down. Big play. Five catches, 55 yards for Holland. Randolph. The freshman to the 29. Bill Moss, 71. Aldisert, 87, combining on the stop for Pittsburgh. Let's look at it. The defensive line play of Pittsburgh. Watch number 71, Bill Moss. He's the All-American tackle. He's playing against Z Joe Ziak. You can see him, the strength, the reactions. The play is going away from him, so he just loses his tackle and comes over and helps out on the tackle. He's been double teamed a lot this year. All-American. He caused that fumble in the first quarter. Second down, six. Sprintouts we have seen in the first and the second and third quarter. Jeff Foster that makes it look like a little sprint out to his left again. But what does he do this time? This time he hands the ball off to his fullback, Ron Wolfley. The defense was still following Hostetler on the sprint out. Instead, Wolfley was running downfield for a big first down. West Virginia now has things kind of going their way. Wolfley that time. Now for 63 yards for the day, rushing. Randolph. That's close to another first down. Good play calling here by West Virginia. We've seen a sprint out in a, in a completion. We've seen a misdirection of Wolfley in a power uh, football right off tackle with Pat Randolph. A good max. W watch number 71, Bill Moss and Wayne Glukowski fight off his block. He's going to come all the way across the field, put, put the stop on Randolph. That's one reason that Bill Moss was an All-American last year. The first since Randy Holloway to play in that position for Pittsburgh. The measurement, they got it. He has a worried look. All of a sudden, they're doing something they haven't done well, Pat, and that's run at him. And you said it very well. They've set it up well. Very nice mix of plays. Tim Quince comes in to tackle. Bukowski checks out for Pittsburgh. Last three West Virginia plays. They've gained 12, 16, and 10 yards. Mike Swanson, our statistician, is always on top of it. On the 45, a pit. Picks up five, maybe six. Benson, Aldisert arrive at the same time. Wendlinkowski also there. Second down coming up. Second down and three. At halftime, I think there was one yard difference in total offense. The surprising it. figure there to me, Gary, is the rushing yards of West Virginia, 103 yards. Pittsburgh normally doesn't give up that name. Second down, three. Hosteller delayed to Wolfley. And Wolfley's got the first down. The same play they ran a little earlier, only this time to the right side. Again, 
set up by all the spread outs, the power football, they had the blitz on, you see number 87, now the sort, run right past Ron Wolfie, number 36, a big gaping hole there, thank goodness Tom Flynn, number 5, comes in and puts the stop on Ron Wolfie, but not before, another first down. Since 1975, West Virginia has not beaten Pittsburgh. This is the drive that they hope puts them ahead and could end the drought. 8.41 left. Stetler, Mullen, he had it for a moment. Troy Hill defending on the play. Just off his hip. As well as Jeff Hostetler has thrown the football today, he's had three, op three or four opportunities where he's had receivers open for big plays and missed them. There was just another one there. As we see Don Nutt Nealon trying to come up with something new on second and ten. Guy alongside him is his backup tight end Todd Fisher that was applauding. Second and ten. Line of scrimmage, the 31. The key to this drive is West Virginia has not faced a third down where they've only been 4 of 13 thus far. Hostetler. Collins, the intended receiver. Again, it was Troy Hill back for the Pittsburgh Panthers. Hill has played him very well. All afternoon long, he's been tough to shake. One of the captains, you don't want to pick on him too much. He's a guy that talks a lot, but they say he can yak it up, but back it up. <laughs> We did there. Third down. Remember, field goal still wouldn't give them the lead, but would you kick it if you don't get it here with 830? I think you have to. Sure, there's plenty of time to get the ball back again and have both sides have an opportunity to win the ball game for you. Third down, 10. Boy, it's going to be close. They'll have to bring the sticks from the far side of the field. Nope, it's the first down. No, they're going to measure. One man indicated first down, and now the other official was saying, let's bring him over. No, I think there's a pit player uh, hurt, Gary, and he's signaling over to the pit bench. Okay, that's what it is. Hosteller can hurt you so many different ways. He can hurt you with his head, with his arms. This time he's going to hurt you with his legs. Again, the naked bootleg, a la Doug Flutie. If again fools the defense, he's going to outrun Chris Dolman, number 56. Tommy Flynn, number 5, right there. Puts a stop on him, but not before he picked up the first down. The man shaking up is Aldisert. One more look. You see Dolman, the outside contain man, that is supposed to be his play. He is fooled. Jeff Hosteller breaks contain, enough for the first down, big play. There's, this, there's the play right there for Alpha Certain got hurt, number 87. The good thing he was six foot three because he needed all that frame to get across that first down marker. And so Alpha Certain is being attended to. 8.24 left to go in the game. Pittsburgh hanging on to a 21 to 17 lead. At the 21 yard line, this is the. Play of this drive. It started on their own 10. Aldisert out of the game. Apke replaces him at linebacker. Randolph. Randolph inside the 20 to the 17. Chris Dolman. Helmet to helmet with him on that tackle. Pat Randolph, the freshman tailback, he's going to face this dip defense for the next three years. You wonder whether he's going to want to after this hit. Again, off tackle to his right side behind Kurt Keel and Rob Bennett. Takes a bruising blow there. It bounces back up. There's the smacker. And the smacky, as you said, has to put up with that for three more years. Second down, six. Wolfley. Close. He needs to get to the 11 for a first down. Aldisert back in the ball game was in on that play. Wolfley's really been remarkable on that play. He lines up in the fullback position, but he picks his hold like a tailback would. He's shown remarkable vision and sight as he picks his way through that pit defense. Big play. Third down a yard. Wolfley has 75 yards for the day and 29 of them on this drive. And they've been hard-earned yards. Seven minutes left in the game. Stetler to Randolph. First and goal. So you want to play the 
defensive back and try to tackle Pat Randolph as he comes through the line of scrimmage. Good luck. He picks up some good blocks by number 60, David Dijonet there. Thank goodness for Tom Flynn, number five, who again makes another saving tackle. Randolph, remember, is a freshman. He's growing up in a hurry this afternoon. All this excitement, the pageantry of football on CBS. 14th play of the drive. First and goal. Six-yard line. Hostetler keeps it. Touchdown. He's had some moments of agony, but what a moment of ecstasy that was. What side? A point after attempt. He hits it. A 90-yard drive. 14 play. It took six minutes, and the Mountaineers lead it. Just one more way to Jeff Costello can beat you. Actually, another beautiful fake from this direction. It's got Pittsburgh defense confused. It's a fake here for the fullback. Wolfley, you see will Hostetler hide the ball behind his back. He picks up a nice block there by Pat Randolph and scampers into the end zone. Again, Hostetler. How's he beat you? He beat you throwing the football. He beat you with his mind. He beat you with his legs. And here, one more time, a good fake to Ron Wolfley. The pit defenders tackle Wolfley. By the time they realize that Hostetler has the football, he is into the end zone. The man who has given the lead, and they hope, West Virginia hopes, it's a lead that will end a seven-year drought. But Pittsburgh still has 627 to change the determination. To beat Pittsburgh, they're leading by three with 627 to go. Subrick to kick off for West Virginia. That's a tough one to handle. Darnell Stone's got it. Breaks out of there. Out to the 25-yard line. The emotion of the college football, Gary, as we take another look at Jeff Costa right there, looking up to the heavens. The ecstasy of the winning and putting your team ahead in a big game like this. We look for this prominence in the East. He's a senior. His last go again, go around for the Pitt Panthers. Pittsburgh. They haven't given up. It's at the 24. The crowd is ecstatic. Tom Jimmy. Incomplete. That was intended for Collins at the 37-yard line. Second down, 10. Don Nealon. That he wanted to catch up to the Pitt, Pitt, Pitt State program. As his program arrived, when he came in here in 1980, Gary, he wanted just to work on their attitude. He felt there was a negative attitude. In 1981, his second year, Don Nealon beat Maryland in a close ball game. He felt that was the turning point. Maybe today it might be another one. Now, Jimmy said only one of his last five passes. Second and ten. second by Kanjemi, the third turnover against Pittsburgh. Again, it looked like John Kanjemi was in miscommunication between he and Bill Wallace. He has pretty good protection. He's looking right at, to his left. Bill Wallace, he is well covered. This ball should not have been thrown. He alert, he elects to throw it, but there's the All-American candidate, number 44, making his fourth interception of this season. A.G. out of Bethesda, Maryland. First down now, just inside the 40. Hostetler to Randolph. West Virginia now would like to kill some time. Chris Dolman made the tackle for Pittsburgh. And here's 
Obviously, you have Paul Woodside on your side. A, a field goal will put them up in a situation where Pitt will have to score a touchdown to beat them. Coach Stacia, last year won nine games. That tied the record for a first-year coach at Pittsburgh. They were 9-3, and three, losing in the Cotton Bowl to SMU. Second and nine. He's going to take a seat and avoid a crushing tackle. Look at Benson over there. There's A.G., who picked off his fourth pass of the year. Bobby Ross, the Maryland coach, just couldn't get over. Now he flies around out there. Well, we've been treated to two very good free safeties right there. Tim A.G., of course, with his two big interceptions. And the, on the other side, Tommy Flynn play, has played very well for Pitt as well. Defensive catalyst. Third down to nine. Bennett comes out, limping a little bit. Todd Fisher replaces him at tight end for the Mountaineers. 4.48 left. Hostetler going to Hollins. Hill is down there. And it's going to be fourth down. I can't get over, and I think we have to point out again how well Troy Hill has played. He's really covered well. And an interesting call here on third and eight. You would expect that West Virginia is going to run the ball off tackle. You actually give Don Nealon some credit. He probably felt that the Pittsburgh defense expected run, expected a short pass, and they decided to go up top to Rich Hollins. They might have fooled some people, but not number 22, Troy Hill. Troy Hill, who's a brother-in-law to Drew Pearson of the Cowboys, as Flynn will go back for this punt. Bad snap. No rush, however. He pooches it. And Flynn does a nice job at the 16-yard line. He pooched it? That's what they call it. 22-yard <laughs> kick. So now Pittsburgh has a long ways to go. With four minutes, 32 seconds remaining. Don't forget, coming up next, live from the Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut, the singles final of the U.S. Women's Indoor Tennis Championship. Sylvia Hanukkah and Kim Schaefer. From the 16, Condini complete to Stennett. Matt Stennett to the 25 and very close to a first down. Steve Newberry defending for West Virginia. Going to be just short of the first down. Second down coming up. The time, 4-10. Timeouts, Pittsburgh has all three of them left. the first down and ends up. See Con Jimmy looking for a block on that play. Mike Scott, 27, made the tackle for the Mountaineers. That stopped the clock with 342. First down at the 33-yard line. When you try to end a long dry spell, it's never easy. West Virginia's battled back and now they gotta hang on. Virginia, right up the gut, number 37, Van Richardson, comes Jimmy never even has a chance. Richardson's made two fine plays in this fourth quarter. That's back to the 21, and now it's second and 22 for the Panthers. Collins comes in, he split out. Steve Newberry 
his 17th interception of his career. That's a record here at West Virginia. And John Kajimi's third interception. The West Virginia pass defense was laying way back, and Kajimi threw right into it. And there's number 28, Steve Newberry, just playing deep one-third. Isolated look at the receivers. Again, this is a play that ran a little earlier, but this time they're trying to get the ball to number 32, Dwight Collins. If you remember, Wallace, number 25, caught the ball further earlier. But Newberry is not fooled, though. Here's a handoff to Randolph. Handoff to the 50, 40. pickup and Morgantown West Virginia is going to be jumping tonight. You think we're going to be able to get out of this town? 1975. They did it in Old Mountaineer Field on the last play of the game, a field goal. They are hanging on to a three-point lead with 2.30 left. And they're starting to celebrate. It's been a long time for West Virginia. Stedler giving up the Wolfer to the 30. Aldershard on the tackle. There's Con Jimmy. He has the three interceptions. And you can see the disappointment in his face. And there's the man with the 17th interception. He didn't They were glad to have him back. He's kind of a spiritual leader in that secondary. Second and five. It's Wolfley again and Benson and Aldersart. A minute 30 away from Bedlam. And this man, Boge Fazio, will suffer his second loss of the year. But he has a very young football team. And Don Nealon, you talk about a big win. Have the Orion. Pittsburgh has three timeouts remaining, but they're not using any of them. Hosteller, Troy Hill. They just haven't been able to get anything in his direction. Wayne Brown was the intended receiver. Fourth down. Side's going to attempt the field goal as Hostetler is king of the town right now. This will be almost 45 yards away. They're going to rule it officially a 44-yard attempt. And now timeout is called. West Virginia. 58 seconds left here in this game. The 76th meeting between Pittsburgh and West Virginia. This is the Xerox 620 Memory Writer. Since it came out, the people who make this electric have brought out a new improved electronic Model 85. But it can't print as fast as the 620. It can't be upgraded to add more memory. And it has no display to make revisions and correct mistakes before they get on paper, like the Xerox 620 does. That's why more and more selective type is select. The 620 Memory Writer from Xerox. You know, back in 1940. There's your time. There's your score. Boge Fazio somehow would like to get the football back. Don Nealon wants to grind out the remaining time. The fourth down, they decided not to go for the field goal. They give. No, Hustler keeps it. And he has a first down. We welcome those of you who have been watching the Arkansas TCU game. I'm Gary Bender along with Pat Hayden. 53 seconds left here at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia. West Virginia seconds away from ending a seven-year drought. Seven years of losing to the Pittsburgh Panthers. And Don Nealon, the man you see on your screen, is the architect of that. The coach in his fourth year at West Virginia. Wayne Lekowski... The senior defensive end for Pittsburgh goes off injured. 
It's been a game of an outstanding big plays. The turnovers. And West Virginia, who last won in 1975, is starting to celebrate. The fans starting to form on the sidelines. Wolfley and Randolph for the backfield. Hostetler to Wolfley. And Wolfley got a yard, and that's all. And now some timeouts. They're going to use some of those timeouts. Pittsburgh uses their first. They have two remaining. I want to thank the West Virginia Athletic Director Fred Schaus and his staff for their help. Head football coach Don Nealon and his staff and sports information director Mike Baldwin. And to the Penn Athletic Department, Ed Bozak, the athletic director. Head football coach Coach Casey Owen, sports information director Jim O'Brien. And Mike Swanson, our statistician, along with Steve Bear, our spotter. And this has been a memorable afternoon for CBS. But what a big, big day it's been for West Virginia. A record crowd of 64,000 witnessing the end of a long, long dry spell. Don Nealon is into this game, Patty. He is very much pumped up. will have a lot of scores and highlights. It's been a most interesting afternoon in NCAA football. Illinois and Iowa, was that a surprise? Georgia Tech against North Carolina. We'll update them. Second down, eight. Give to Randolph, and Randolph, short of the 20 to the 21. Wendell Linkowski back into the game, number six making the stop for the Pitt Panthers, and the Panthers use another timeout. They have one remaining. 43 seconds remaining in this one. West Virginia, who trailed at halftime, 21 to 14. Coming back on Jeff Hostetler's keeper, and they have a three-point lead. to Randolph. Jeff Hostetler sprinting out to his left. It's actually a surprise call. He sprints out and throws the ball to number 24, Pat Randolph, to pick up the first down. Very much a surprise call. And so it's first and goal at the seven after that with 37 seconds now left in the game. Randolph, no place to go that time. Line of scrimmage will still be the seven. 